people. Like I, I don't, uh, America would care. Well, the white of you know, I can see that, but I, I don't see no black people speaking on it. Huh? Do anybody else see black people? Well, say that again, Bo. I missed that last part you said. I said I don't see black people like really caring about this, like. Oh, you you must have seen some of these. Um, like I said, you gotta look at some of these flags that was online today, boy. Like you had like some of our Jamaican brothers and sisters over there. Oh my God, good woman, good woman. And I'm like, hey, and like I say, I am not here to mark this woman's death or anything like that. I don't have any issue with because I'm 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 over in America, so you know. But yeah, a lot of them over there, and you gotta remember too. Now you got a lot of islanders and stuff that. That were colonized by, like I say, Great Britain as well. So a lot of them have fond memories of the actual royal family. Are they telling you a part of the? Uh, are they still colonized? But I know, like uh, Canada is still kind of like ran by the whatever they doing right there. Right? They're, they're, they're like independent. Canada. They're independent, so to speak. You know that they're, they're, they're no longer part of the actual British crown, but. You still, I, you, I kind of wonder if it's, it's not sort of like how we have a lot of these African nations that are independent, so to speak, yet they still take orders from their colonial masters. And I think a lot of that is what goes on. Man, about about, about 10 years ago, like you had about, about 50% of the Jamaican population was asking to be back under the British crown. Like they were, they were talking about how tough life was over there and that they want to be back underneath the British crown. And, and look at what was that? Barbados said that they, you know, they, I think she went down there to Barbados, didn't she? Or somebody went. That was a. That was a. I think that was Prince Harry and his wife. What her name? Uh, Kate. I think they went down there. And, you know, they got a. They got a rude awakening. Like those people weren't happy to see them. Those people were like, "Hey, that's when the thing oh, spread." About, no, I was talking about Barbados. Just got uh got away from the crowd, or the whatever the hell they they doing. Oh they yeah, it's a, got it's, full independence. Yeah, it's a bunch of them down there that then got independence or one independence from the actual British Crown and whatnot. So yeah, you're right on that. It's, I don't know if it was Barbados. It's a it's a it's a few countries down there. Let's where is Rihanna again. from? Rihanna from Barbados. Oh yeah, that, that's who it is. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it was a Barbados then. Professor, I see you got your hand up. So go ahead and unmute your mic. First, um, I, I don't want to make mockery of her death, but I, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm happy or, or anything like that or, or I'm celebrating her death or her life or whatever. I just don't think that entire family was down with black people, black Americans, black anything. From my understanding... Is a lot of racism in that family, from what I have read over the years. Uh, and you might want to ask Megan Marker, uh, which is Harry's wife. You might want to ask her about that because she recently, back here last year, maybe two years ago, spoke about the racism in that family. So I can't sit here and say that I'm going to glorify this woman. Three days ago, this whole queen and king shit anyway. Uh, they all they do is fuck each other. Excuse my French, y'all. But it's all in the family. That's what they've been doing all over the years. Is everybody all over Europe has been fucking one another, cousins and and brothers and shit like that. And they call themselves kings and queens, colonizing black people and enslaving black people. I, I'm sorry, y'all. I can't I can't sit here and get down with all this celebrating her life and shit. Um, but with the queen, I'm not gonna mark her death. But I the hell with her in England. Now, I think the only reason why anybody's over here talking about it, because, you know, there's a connection with England and, of course, in the United States, because you got people over here that, uh, I guess you could say, are uh, descendants uh, from those people over there, of course. And then, and then of course, uh, some of the slave trade, of course, will, will involve England. So I think there is going to be a connection there for us, too, y'all. Now, we might not want to talk about that, but there is going to be a connection there because those folks were bringing slaves over here. England was part of the slave trade. So that is something that we're going to have to deal with. Um, just putting it out there. They were part of it. So we probably need to try to go after reparations when it comes to them, too. Um, I land my plane there. 
Definitely, definitely. Professor, I know you said earlier you had a hard time hearing me. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear everybody now. Um, oh, okay. This, oh, this is what I was going to tell y'all about this whole, uh, whatever's going on with these connections in these spaces. I saw it posted on somebody's page and uh, something to do with if you get uh, or you have issues like this here, you need to copy the link, which is what I did. I copied the link of this space and you then take it and, and move it over to the rail browser, whatever rail browser you have, which I guess in this case would be Google Chrome for most people. And then you put it in there. Then for whatever reason, that seems to fix the, the, the problem, which now I can hear everybody and I'm not having connection issues. So I just want to let everybody know that's what you need to do. Okay, no problem, no problem. And I want to say this too. I believe that, that um, isn't it, isn't it true that I know that she is the is she the biggest landowner? Or she was the biggest landowner because of being part of the royal family and whatnot. I believe she was the, the biggest landowner in the entire world as well. I'm because of the the British crown and you know at one time Great Britain colonized a third of the world. You know, I believe that Queen Elizabeth II was the largest landowner on earth of course she was for the longest and I, I would assume she probably still was but when she died she was one of the richest women we know in the world but i believe because of all of the um colonization that went through and you know how great britain is and whatnot that i believe that she was the richest i believe she was the biggest landowner on earth i, I believe that man or woman i believe that she was the biggest landowner there was that there was nobody that owned more land than uh, Queen Elizabeth, so I mean that just that just puts into account the kind of empire that Great Britain had at one time. You would not think some little little piece of country like that could go throughout the world and do what they did, but damn it, they didn't do what they did. So I mean, not well, no news to hold on. Actually, before that family had control of a lot of the lands, it was actually their cousins from Russia that had the most. And that's going to be the the Nicholas II and his family. Um, of course, you know they was killed off and uh, during the so-called uh, uh, Russian Revolution of 1917. But it was that family, which is going to be cousins to Queen Elizabeth II, that had the most. And of course, after that got killed, after that family got killed in Russia, that's when the English family took over everything. I just want to make that correction right there. Yeah, I mean, I just meant in modern time, like, you know, in, in modern time that she, because one thing about Russia, Russia pretty much stayed over there in, 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 in Eurasia, whatever, like they didn't, they didn't have the, they didn't go ahead and, and said, we're going to colonize the world like Great Britain wanted to, or did, like France tried, like Spain, like so many of those Western European nations, where they had the mindset that we're going to, anything that's not voted down, we take it for ourselves or whatever. So Russia, you're right, that I'm sure that just the, the sheer land size of, of Russia in itself, yeah, I'm sure at one time they, they had the probably the most land or whatever, but in modern time, I, there's nobody, I believe, that had more land, because like I say, Great Britain, they, they colonized, they took they, they end up taking North America. They end up taking the Caribbean. They took parts of Asia. They took parts of Africa. They took all of Australia. I mean, there's not a whole lot of places on this earth that they, you know, that, I mean, it's a reason that we all speak English. It's a reason that English, you know, is a universal language. People didn't just choose one day and say, hey, you know what? You know, that English sounds like a nice language. Let me go ahead and learn how to speak that. Let me just forget my native tongue. and Let me just start start saying some English words because it's such a nice, nice language to pick up. And it's such a nice language to know. No, that language came by force. <laughs> you had to learn that language or get the dog kicked out of you. So that's all I'm saying is that in terms of that, she was she was one of the um, – biggest landowners and i believe she was the biggest landowner at one time in this in this country so that just lets you know like i say about the power we know that she's she was one of the richest women in the world if not the richest woman on earth just because of all everything that her grandfather and grandfather and that grandfather and everything i mean her bloodline goes back you're talking about to the um what medieval times and stuff like that and you're right professor when you're saying that one thing about europe is that they all of these people, Russia, the Russian, the, all of the um, royalty, whether you're in Russia, Spain, England, this or wherever, 
all of these people are related to a certain degree. That's why when they pick and choose for somebody to get married, they're making sure that they have some kind of royal connection to it, which means they have some kind of blood. Now, they might be a distance cousin or whatever, but nonetheless, they're still related. So that was, you know, that they, they keep it in there. Like, that's why like, when they talk about marrying a company or something like that, like, this face almost drops. Like, what are you trying to do there? Like, you're going to mess everything up. Because for thousands of years, they form this. They form this entire royal family network. And like I say, even though the people in East Europe are not considered what the ones in West Europe are, or whatever, they still they still cousins of theirs. They're still related to them. They still part of that whole royal family connection. So when you start hearing things about this royal person, and I think they got somebody in one of those royal families. Now nah, I forgot who it was, but one of those white women. I believe has a black boyfriend or something like that that everybody's pissed off about. I had read that a while ago, but one of those, you got one of those black people in the royal family. Princess Caroline of Monaco, I think. Okay, yeah, it's one of them. Got it. Got them a black, a black dude, and you know, and I, this ain't somebody like Megan, who who who's mixed. I believe this is a, a this is like a full blooded black person. So when you start having that going on, yeah, you got some issues coming up here. So you definitely. Nobody, they're not happy about that. So, but we, we know the royal family also, their bloodline, when they talk about, uh, when they talk about Princess, uh, what was it, Princess uh, Caroline and Charlotte or whoever, all these people go back. They're talking about, people forget that black people were in Europe during the medieval times. Yeah, Before Queen the medieval Charlotte. Times. Queen Charlotte, it is, right? Yes, Queen Charlotte. What's that show that comes on Netflix? I, I never. I can't get into it. I just couldn't watch it. I just didn't want to see this. I know you had it. it I don't know if it's called. There's a couple Bridgeton. of them, bro. There's a couple of them. You got the Last Kingdom. You got Vikings. You know, no, 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 not Last Kingdom Vikings because that that is that is the that is the Viking type. That, that that's Viking and Anglo. But this one here is based in Europe. It's like Bridgerton. You got a couple black black dudes over there, a couple black girls. I just seen the previews. Like I said, I couldn't watch it because I didn't want to sit up here and see these black folks cutting the fool up and oh, I mean, yeah, okay, that, that was the Vikings of our holler. That's, a, uh, that's the History Channel uh, show. Vikings no, 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 no. This I'm telling you, this one is called Bridgerton or something. It, 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 it's like in it's it's like medieval time in Europe, but you got I'm saying this this ain't got nothing to do with Vikings. This is straight this is straight Anglo uh the, the Saxons or whatever they call them. So this is straight England and it's called Bridgerton or something like that. You got it, Ray. Now real quick, I just wanted to see if anyone else has noticed how they're trying to rebrand Queen Elizabeth's uh, relationship with Africa. You know, because obviously it was, colon you know, it was colonialism, but they're definitely trying to rebrand it. I mean, this woman hasn't even been dead 24 hours yet. That's what I'm saying, man. That article I was reading, man, I may have to go ahead and pull that up. And I'm just going to read that part there when they're talking about her history with uh with black folks and this and that and, 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 and how she, um how she, how she, you know, because they talked about how she modernized the um, the monarchy and this and that, but how she also um, how she also had this affinity with black, or not she was almost like a, a race neutral type person, almost like she she um, she went in there and she tried to um, help with the race issue, and she was definitely against uh, okay supporting racial justice in the Commonwealth, and in the Commonwealth against the states and the, and the countries and stuff that they pretty much conquered, but. It says the royal family is not often cited as being particularly woke. They are, after all, blindly white and privileged as whole, not just rich but royal. But one of the great and often looked achievements of the queen was the quiet work she did over the years to support racial equality and advancement in the world. So uh, apparently, I mean, she's, a, she's the most popular woman in the world, but her work had to be quiet. As noted by the New York Times, Queen Elizabeth work began in the early years in 1961. They always talk about this. She danced with the president of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah, a black man. This outraged many races both in her own kingdom and larger commonwealth. But the queen was resolute in her support of equality. And she worked behind the scenes to get the commonwealth to condemn South Africa's apartheid system. Only to be stymied by her own prime minister, Margaret Thatcher. And Margaret Thatcher was a, a pure racist who opposed the statement for reasons both personal and political. According to the Washington Post, the Queen also supported the Black Lives Movement. While the royal family has been accused of holding racist attitudes, including Prince Harry, 
As reported by CNBC, some have noted that these criticisms often seem not to include the queen herself. So it's like the whole family was racist except the queen. And like I say, I, we ain't here to cast stones or, or talk about it, this and that. But, you know, I just find it hard to believe that a woman that had the kind of influence and the power that she had. And we, we also know that to a certain degree, she was a figurehead, but she was a figurehead. She's the most powerful figurehead on earth. You know, don't let anybody fool you. That it's a, I mean, it's a reason that she had the kind of wealth that that she had, and it's not simply because that she was just some some figurehead who just trotted out. She had some, she had a voice, she had the ability to do some things and stuff like that. But it's just it's crazy that she did all of this stuff behind the scenes. That she never just came out and say, "Hey, apartheid in South Africa is wrong." We came over to this. We, we, we came over to this, this continent, and we're colonized. We're the majority. It's not right that the people that was here thousands of years before we ever set foot on this land are, 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 are being treated like slaves. So she never said that. It's great that she supported Black Lives Matter. It would have been even greater if she came out. I know she was an older woman at the time, and she came out and said that. It would have been great if she would have came out during the Civil Rights Movement and said something about what was going on over here in America. But you also have to look at it at the same thing, too, is that, let's be for real, even though you had a bunch of black people from the islands that moved to Jamaica, moved from Jamaica to, to England, I mean, they weren't living the greatest lives over there either. I mean, that's been a big misconception of a lot of black people that started back in World War II. We had a lot of black veterans that, you know, after the war was over, they got treated better than they did when they was over than they were over here in America. And they felt that, you know, Europe was a much better place to live and this and that. But let's not forget, I mean, a lot of these, these, these white supremacist ideas came from actually Europe. I mean, it, it manifested it and it went to a whole other level over here in America. But a lot of these ideas about white superiority and stuff originated off the continent. You got it, Ray. Yeah, I saw something very interesting. I just wanted to share with everybody. Uh, you know, just listening to a debate where they were talking about, you know, England and, you know, just everything that was going on during that time. And I actually heard, and I'm trying to look it up for myself. That's why it took me so long to come on. That actually the concept of, you know, last names, that came from out of England because basically they were trying to find a way to uh, tax everybody. And obviously having last names and things that made it a lot easier to do. I know it sounds crazy, but I was listening to the debate. And they were talking about basically, uh, if you really think about it, does anybody even know the queen's last name? Because if you look it up, it says, uh, I think her name is Elizabeth Windsor. But for my people that, you know, have traveled, you know, that's been in England, you know, Windsor is also the name of the council that she stayed at. Yeah, I'm not sure what her last name, and that's what people assume that is Windsor, but you know, we don't know. I, I honestly don't know what their last name is. <laughs> like, that's a good thing. Like, you're right. Like, I, 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 and we assume, a lot of people assume that it's Windsor, but I want to say that it's not Windsor. You know, that's crazy. Like, nobody, we... That's how big they are when you think about it. When people don't even have to have a damn last name, like, bro, how you, are you, are you, are you, are you years old and don't even know your last name? But isn't it a town called Windsor, Windsor too, over in England? I believe it probably is. Right, because that's that's what most of these streets that over here in America they're named after people. You know what I'm saying? So Windsor, you know, and uh, Buckingham, those are named after people. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, well we got a lot of names, you know, a lot of stuff that that that, that was named over there in, in Europe and whatnot. They brought it right over here and started naming it and, and things like that of that nature. But like Ray was saying, like you know, I personally can, you know, just off the top of my head, I don't really know what her last name is. Um, and I know they also had a, and, and, and like one um one of one of our um, listeners, Tony, she let me know that yeah, that that show I think was called uh, Bridgerton and, and the Royal, but. I was watching one of them, and it wasn't a, it wasn't like one of the old. It was one about like like uh, what's her name, um, Queen Elizabeth. It was a newer one, but it was so boring. Like I just couldn't get into it. I saw when she actually became the queen, and I saw when her father died and and whatnot. But God, it was just so boring. I just I couldn't even watch it all. And you know, it is what it is. I, I actually rather if I'm gonna watch something about Europe, I actually rather would watch the stuff from like the ancient times and whatnot. Like, but. I tried getting into it, and I just, you know, my just, I just couldn't get into it. It was just, it was boring. It was dry. It was long. It just, 
it, every time I wash it, I wash it at nighttime. I, I end up watching it. Next thing I know, I was asleep. So I think I watched three, four episodes of that, and I just could not get into it. So any of y'all seen it, go ahead and finish it up and let me know how it was. I could not get into it or anything like that. It was boring. It was dry. It was it just a plot. I mean, I thought it was going to have more action in that, like I say, and you know, and of course they're not gonna they're not gonna go they're not gonna go in on the royal family like that. But I thought it was gonna be better than what it was. But I, I couldn't even I couldn't get into it. You got it, Ray. No, I'm sorry. I had to step away from the mic for a quick second. So uh, the last thing I heard was about uh I guess a town called Windsor and uh you know in England. And that that was the last thing I heard. I believe it was DJ that was talking. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I don't really have uh the knowledge I should have when it comes to you know British monarchies and things like that. So that's why I'm really kind of keeping quiet because I'm trying to learn. No, you know, shame and that or anything. Like I say, anybody that's in the space too that wants to speak, and if you just want to talk about the impact of the queen, I also want to talk about reparations. Do y'all think now with the queen gone, and we know Prince Charles, uh, and he's no longer Prince Charles, he's King Charles. Do you think that the, 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 the Commonwealth, because um, you got you got the nations in the Caribbean. You got even India that would have some claim to reparations. Australia, and I heard them over there talking about giving the Aborigines some chump change or whatever. You got the Aborigines. Uh, let's not also forget that you got uh, nations in Africa that that fell to uh, Great Britain. And let's not forget here before that this this country became the United States of America when it was a continental continental America. You know. Our forefathers to these people as well too. So, is there any is, is there any way possible that you guys think with the actual? Because you have a lot of these nations that were once colonies of Great Britain that have definitely turned on them that don't want to have anything to do with them. They see the actual reparation movement in America taking steam. It has motivated them. It has put um, a, a fire in their belly. So now they're demanding, hey, we want justice as well. We want we want rep- reparations. We want, no, no, we want this. We want that. Over in Africa, um, I forget which country it was, that they, they're talking about Germany. They're like, hey, Germany, y'all owe us X amount of dollars and this and that. So it's something that started in America. We know when it starts it, it kind of just filters all around the world. So original, if you, have, if you have an answer on that or whatever, please let me know. If you think that's something that's a possibility, go ahead and share it with us. Yes, <clears throat> the reparation is a possibility. I think that's Angola and Namibia, because uh, Germany did a lot of horror over there, <clears throat> the way they uh, raped and murdered and pillaged the people over there. I mean, it was horrible. And well, and for, as, as, as far as uh, as far as Elizabeth, but I don't call, I don't call her the key word. I really don't. I have no respect for. Her. There was a brother, his name is uh, Paul Ethiome Grant. His parents are Jamaican, but, you know, since they uh, ruled Jamaica, so he, I think, I'm not sure where he was born, but I had a connection with him over the Internet. And he wrote this book, Blue Skies for Africans. And what happened was he was doing a lot of work over there in England, you know, to progress the black people forward. And so somebody from Elizabeth camp, contacted him and they wanted him to come out and they were going to do some stuff and left. And he wrote him back and said he didn't need a damn thing from him. And so they tried to, uh, they tried to cover it up. But what he did, he took a copy of the letter and put it in the book. <laughs> so, you know, there are some who don't, who don't allow them to control their mind and their emotions and, you know, to, uh, they don't feel that uh, they don't feel sad or anything when they die because they know how evil they are. I mean, I don't see her as a nice person because what what they had to do to black people around the world in order to get their wealth is criminal. Because I think it was uh, Professor James Small. He was on a um, he was he was in England once, and he was on he was being interviewed on this radio show and somebody asked him about the elect I, I just say that family but I don't call them they're not royal to me and he referred to them he referred to them as others have as a criminal enterprise that is what 
they are. They are a criminal enterprise because they couldn't they couldn't have what they uh, they couldn't have what they obtained without criminal acts. And I think we need to look at that. And as far as the reparations, yes, we uh, if we all if people, if more black people just to come on could get on cold with us, reparations could be done tomorrow. But unfortunately, we got these tethers and coons and everything else that uh, who align themselves with those people, which is going to have to, which is going to make us put in more work. But I just want to say that this, her and her entire family are a group of criminals, and I'll land with that. If y'all take a jumbo and I put the actual article, one of the articles that um I posted today. If you guys head to newsholder.com, make sure y'all visit newsholder.com, the largest curator of black news today in America. Make sure you visit. Uh Treble, go ahead and unmute your mic. Hey, I put my hand down. I'm sorry. What's up to the group? <laughs> I put my hand down because I was really just um wanted to speak to Cliff when you were saying um about nobody knowing her last name. So I did a quick Google search um on an article that was really saying that they changed their name in the early nineteen hundreds because they didn't want the negative association with um, Germany because they're technically Germans. And so I think it's, I think the article said around 1917, that's when they, they made the G call to just go with the name of the house. Um, she also took the name Windsor so that she could associate, so she could make the distinction with her children from the rest of the Royals. Now, I don't know what all of that is about, but I didn't read the full article. I just wanted to get a quick synopsis of it just so I could just put that little bit of input in. And so I land right there. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Um, and I had just, somebody had just DM'd me that same information as well, too. So, yeah, that definitely was something that they decided to go ahead. And, uh, and that gets back to what I was saying, the intermarriage. Okay, even though these people fought for thousands of years, uh, the, the Anglo, the... They're, they're from Wales, they're, they're from this place, they're from that place. They still intermarried, and they still have that royal family, that same tree together. So they German, yet they're British. You figure. Ray, you got to go ahead and unmute your mic. <clears throat> so I ain't going to lie, I was kind of waiting on somebody to mention it. Y'all started talk part of the, yeah, start talking about international crime families. There has never been anybody that has done it bigger or better than the British. I definitely want to put that out. And I've heard, you know, obviously this is all rumors. I know this is a reported space, so everything I'm going to say is allegedly. So, you know, obviously back when Princess Diana got killed, I heard that, you know, she kind of had a say in that, allegedly. You know, because obviously Princess Diana was, she was dating that uh, Egyptian. I think his name was like Dodi Fayed or whatever it was. I think that was his name. And uh, I've heard that, you know, she didn't, she wasn't really fond of him coming into this royal family and that, that, that was pregnant. Like. So, like I said, I just definitely just want to throw that little tidbit in there. And I've also heard this, too, that after Diana died, that she didn't get an autopsy, I believe it was like to like 10 years after her death or something ridiculous like that. And that uh, the driver, wasn't he, you know, allegedly drunk when uh, Princess Diana crashed? I mean, I don't know about you, but you know, if you're working for the royal family, how the fuck are they going to let you come in and drive the princess around drunk? That, that just, you know, that doesn't make any sense to me. But I'll land on that. Yeah, and I see that Jamaica is supposed to, I'm going to put this in a jumbotron. I just saw this. Um, Got a DM that Jamaica is supposed to have like a 12-day mourning period commemorating um, the queen's death. So, like I say, um, even though they, uh, quote-unquote, are no longer a possession or a territory or a colony of the British Empire, you still kind of see exactly who still runs a shot over there, who still calls it and whatnot. So, and like I said, I'm not saying anything negative about the woman or this and that. Because like I said, Jamaica, a lot of Jamaicans will tell you, I, I grew up in South Florida, down south, a lot of Jamaicans will tell you quick, they speak the King's English. Not, not all of them, <laughs> but quite a bit of them will tell you that they speak the King's English. And I'm looking like, and what that's supposed to mean? <laughs> okay, you speak the King's English, we speak George Washington's English. 
Uh, I mean, what what difference does it make? <laughs> we both speak as a language that was forced on us. So I don't feel your language is any superior than my language that I'm speaking. And hell, we speak in the same language. So what are you talking about? You got it, Ray. No, nah, real quick, I just wanted to add in. A lot of people forget that Dodi Payet was killed in that traffic accident, too. I definitely wanted to add that in, too, man. It's a, it, some ain't some just, to me, that's never really seen right about that. That that accident that Princess Diana had, when was that, like, 95 or something? I believe that was 97. 97, 97 when it happened. Okay. So I, I land on that, man. So we need to keep the conversation moving. That's definitely something we can talk about because I'm telling you, man, it, 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 it's, it's something sketchy that, that went on that night. Hey, Original, go ahead and unmute your mic. Yeah, uh, when Brother Ray, he mentioned uh, Dodi Fayed, the reason that they didn't like Dodi Fayed, because, see, <laughs> see, people, they forget, about, a lot of people forget about the era slave trade. The era slave trade started before the transatlantic slave trade and went on longer. But, see, unfortunately, you get a lot of uh, uh, black Muslims, they will uh, uh, put threats on you because, you talk about the Arab slave trade, and that just shows what hold that particular religion has on them. But see, with the Arabs, um, when I was conducting research on them, see, they would uh, castrate uh, uh, black men. Well, they would castrate them as children, and maybe one to maybe four out of the out of ten of the children would survive that mutilation. And what they would do is they would, of course, rape the black women. So some people, unfortunately, some black people, let me say, they cut him because he, they will refer to the Arabs as the sand N word or whatever, you know. But see, I don't see them that way. I see them what they are, the white folks. And so that is why they did not like that Dodi Fayed because they saw him as having too much black blood in him. But see, that's the whole, I mean, the whole thing is like, it's, it's not really complicated, but it, it can become somewhat confusing at times when you're doing research on it. But that was why they hated, they didn't want, uh, uh, that was the rumor as to why they said that Diana was pregnant by Dodie, and they did not want that child to be born. Because they would say the child would have been, uh, you know, black or whatever, because they see, you know, the Arabs as having a lot of black blood in them, but it doesn't matter. But when they see us, <laughs> they just, they act like white people. Because, see, I work with this Arab guy when I worked at McDonald Douglas in California. And so he came in one day and he says, oh, he said, this guy, he called me the SN. And I'm like, okay, but yeah, well, I, can, I can look. I don't want to hear your problems because I said when he had a chance to help me out with something, he wouldn't do it. So I told him, Jack, you're on your own. I got my own problem. I don't have time to deal with your problem. So that's the thing about them and being called, you know, uh, saying, saying nigger is what they were called. But anyway, I will land on that. Right, no problem. Quade, I see you up in the spot. It's been a little minute since you've been up in the news uh, space. What's going on? Nothing much. Nothing much. How are everybody doing? I uh, just wanted to uh, continue off with the last guy said original. There's a lot of truth in the way he said, I'm, I am FBA, I am Muslim, and I'll be the first to tell you that the other groups, the majority of the other groups who are Muslim, are super racist. We all know this. We all know this. One of the things within the religion is that we're not, we're all supposed to put God first and our, uh, like in any religion, put God first and your righteous and moral characters. However, every other group within a religion, for the most part that I see today, that definitely put their ethnicity and race above anything um that Dodi Fias, of course you know the british the british uh crown and all them jokers see home as he's too black but them they are definitely white you know i say people are what they try to fight to be 
um, um, I lived in Egypt when I was a kid, my bubble, especially North Egypt, Alexandria is where I was. And uh, they definitely want to be white. And, they, and I think, and I also think that they are up there. Now, once you start getting into like mid Egypt and Southern Egypt, yeah, those are Nubians. Those are, uh, they're, they're black people. They, they definitely are. But we still can't really be on that pan Africanism thing because, you know, like I said, everybody puts their tribe above everything else. Um, now, the Arab slave trade, oh, that definitely did happen. That definitely did happen. And it would be surprising to people that there was a lot of those East Africans that were heavily involved in it. And that's the other thing. So, for some reason, I don't know what it is with the, the African brothers and sisters, but they definitely partake in that and that and any and every type of slave trade. You know, they help on the east on the east side after they help the Arabs uh, 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 do what they did. Now, in the religion itself, like I said, you know, in the religion itself, it's not supposed to be any racism. But you know, seeing what we see today, we all know how people really feel, how people really get down. I, I, I'm gonna land there. Okay, I'm gonna get to you original. I want to say something. The girl Tony uh, put something in the comment section. She said that Harry and Megan are actually cousins. <laughs> like, I mean, like you know, I didn't know that. I know you saying because of the father or on the father's side or whatever. But damn, like when you think about it, like I say, these people all any marriage, I think it has to be some kind of it has to be some kind of like, and this there has to be some kind of blood there. Like, I don't care if it's a fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth cousin. The way they want to keep and even though she's a commoner or what, it has to be some kind of blood to, to my knowledge. It's another thing I never thought about. Like, I know a lot of times, like, when you have, like, a commoner marry a royal, normally they have the royal go ahead and almost, like, advocate, like, their, their position or whatever. Like, they're like, okay, Harry could no longer be the prince or anything like that, but... That wasn't in this case. In this case, that that didn't happen. Harry, like, still, even though he ain't got no chance of being more than likely being ever to be in the king of England because his brother and then his brother kids and all that would be ahead of him and whatnot, they still say, "Well, Harry, you know, since you're gonna marry this, 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 uh, this mixed girl and she's a common and this and that, you got to go ahead and give up your title or whatever." Harry's still the damn prince. I just thought that was like a little fool for thought. Original, go ahead and unmute your mic. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think he, I think he had to give up his prince title. I don't think he, so I think some of the media will still call him the C word, but I think he had to give that up when they left. Because so they had to pay back some money. Absolutely. But what the brother was saying about some of the East Africans being involved in the air play trade, that is very true. There was this one guy, his name is Chippo Chip. Uh, he was known, he, he, had, he, he lived in, uh, I think it was uh, Zanzibar. And I, th I can't think of the name that changed that country to at this point in time. But anyway, he had like about 10,000, now he was, he was black, he was black as the night. But he had like over 10,000 Africans enslaved under that, under that Arab religion. I mean, religion to me it is just so crappy. And that's why I just can't deal with it because I see the evil. And you can say it's not, people can say it's not the religion, it's the people. But in my opinion, they're one and the same. So you can't have a lot of that that was on. It happened like uh, in Nigeria, whereby I was looking at this guy. He said, yeah, I said, see what the, what the Muslim will do from what I can see. Some, not all, but some of them will, will claim to be this this Pollyanna higher than, I mean, not, what's what I don't mean, this, uh, this, these pious people, and th that they're holier than thou and this and that. But when the lights go down, oh my goodness, it's like who, 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 who does it and, and what you want to do? Because one thing that I found out, you remember I told you that when this, when this black Muslim attacked me because I said that uh, Muslim was holding Africans enslaved, and and it was around that time when, you know, when uh, when Libya was called a few years ago, selling Africans in slave. He was in slavery. And so he, he jumped on me. But one of, one of the things that I did not release, 
I went after him hard. Is that I was reading, it. and in the book, it was this, this book with it because I, 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 I was going to go after him like nobody had went after somebody before. But what happened? There was this book I came across. It was called The Origin of Saint Women, The Origin of Same Sex Relation in Human Society. And what the, according to this book, because I was really pissed off, according to this book, in the Muslim faith, they are required to get married and produce at least one child. And this is with the men and the women. Sometimes they're just married, and the women got their girlfriend on the side, and the man got his boyfriend on the side. I mean, this stuff is so jacked up, you have to step away from it and say, I can't read it anymore right now. You know, but that's just, that's just the dysfunction of some of these religions. And I'll land on that. Absolutely, absolutely. If you guys look up in the jumbo tron, what I was telling y'all right now, I'm going to go ahead and read this and read just some of the comments. This is from uh, Jamaica uh, uh, Gleaner, and it's saying uh, the Jamaican government has announced a series of activities, including 12 days of national mourning to mark Thursday's death to Queen Elizabeth II, who is the country's head of state. The period will be observed from September 8th through the 19th. A day of mourning will be held on September 18th. Now, I'm just going to read you some of the comments from some of the people that, um, you know, saw that. And they said, laugh out loud. This is some blank, blank. <laughs> wow, Jamaican's going out bad. Who's surprised? This is why Kanye West said, for 400 plus years of slavery sounds like it was a choice. He was right. We got somebody else. Saying these folks are done. If we got somebody with Jamaican flags. Come, we go chant down Babylon one more time. Got somebody else says, was looking for us to conduct even one day of national mourning for the four kids and their mom whose throats were slashed a few weeks ago for the numerous number of children who have been victims of murder, but nothing happened. But we're talking about taking 12 days for the queen. Somebody else wrote, this means no work and we still get paid. Somebody else said, 12 days of mourning for who? Let's do 40 days and 40 nights for all the persons who died under your watch with their windows and door wide open. Somebody else said, is that a public holiday? We had another person say, so work, now nah, keep. Sounds like a plan. We should all visit the beach as we mourn. Uh, I can't really make out what this person said. Keep your hocus pocus to yourself. So we get any of those 12 days off? Another person said. I chose to mourn on 26th, my birthday. Tired the man, please go hurry up, Republic. Man, I don't know exactly what he was saying there. Laugh out loud. It's not going to happen. Not so soon after Lizzie's death. Sorry if my morning seems too cele celebratory. Please change that morning day to the 17th or 19th. The 18th is my birthday. No morning around here. So we got a bunch of different. It says, boy, y'all goofy as, as hell. Hold it, Baker. Crazy as hell. Pathetic. What the F? Doing what now? Jamaicans, y'all co-sign this. So how do, I, how do I, as an FBA, support Jamaican politicians that are against this? Coming to Jamaica soon. Then we got somebody that put up a little coon, um, a little coon sign. So you, you can tell there's a few people that's not really happy with the way this is. This can't be real. Incredible. So help me with my math, somebody. We're having 12 days of mourning, but one of those 12 days will be a day of mourning. What would the other, other, other 11 days be? Jamaica, where the boy come from? So no school for some? These... N I G G, you know what? These here. So which one is a holiday? Oh dang, my condolences. So to put it just in perspective, a bunch of comments, bunch of people upset, bunch of people wondering why. They, I guess they're figuring that you have a bunch of other people that get murdered there all the time. Like they said, you had a mother and, and four kids get their throat slashed. There was no national day of mourning for these people here. And you know, like I said, this is, this is a political figure. This is somebody who world-renowned, so you know she's going to get her flowers. 
she's head of one of the she's head of one of the most powerful countries or, or, or a speakerhead of one of the most powerful countries that ever existed. Great Britain, the UK, the British Empire, whatever you want to call it or whatever. So you know the amount of respect and mourning that she's gonna get is gonna be different from say anybody up in this space who was to unfortunately die. Plus the woman's ninety six years of age, so you know, at ninety six you can't really be sad if somebody dies at they they ninety six years of age because they have lived a very long, 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 long time. They live longer than just about anybody in this space will live. Hell, she's probably lived. She's it's probably maybe less than one percent of the people in the world that's going to live to be as old as the Queen of England. So, just um, you know, just a, a bunch of upset people, a bunch of people that didn't really understand. And like I said, I remember about ten years ago, Great Britain was asking, and some of the people, some of Great Britain, half of Great Britain was asking to be placed back under British rule. They wanted to be back underneath the crown because they felt things had got too rough and too hard. So when you start having people saying stuff like that, that would be the that would be the equivalent of us saying, "Hey, uh, let us be slaves again." You know, or like in a Jim Crow. Jim Crow would probably be a better a, a better analysis. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Things are so hard out here for us down here in the South. Why don't y'all go ahead and just put us back in Jim Crow? And like I said, that wasn't all of Jamaicans, but it was a significant portion of them that was saying some dumb stuff like that when the other ones should have went ahead and told them to shut the hell up because that makes absolutely no sense. It makes us look weak as hell to also say something so ignorant. We don't want to be under any of these. We can self-manage. We can self-govern. For whatever reason, we have a, too many of our people that think that if we had to actually govern ourselves and self-rule that we would just fall off the earth or something. Like, it can't happen. I know a lot of people were saying that, that, that even with, with my man, Black State Majority, they were saying like, it's almost like even like a, a fear. Like when people start talking about having a majority Black State, like, oh my God, what's going to, how's the crime going to be? Oh, well, what we going to do? And then, I mean, come on, man. It's time to like really grow up here. Time to grow up here. DJ, how was your, um, how was your, um, um, how was the, um, connection issues? You still have any connection issues, anything? No, I'm not having a connection issues. I'm just uh, still over here getting some work, and that's all. I'm listening to y'all. Y'all cooking, y'all cooking. Keep, keep, keep chefing, keep chefing. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, because I, I know we had some connection issues earlier and whatnot, so I just want to make sure. Ready? And also, anybody who also wants to speak, Queen B, uh, Quade, I know you spoke earlier, original, if you want to get back up here and speak. Anybody in the actual um, space that wants to come up and speak, by all means, if you feel, um, you can let us know how you feel about this situation. You can let us know what do you think possibly is in the worst. Can uh, can the colonies and the, the former uh, territories of, of the UK, Great Britain, can they potentially get um, can they potentially get them um, the reparations? Is this something that, that King Charles? I got to get used to calling him King Charles, which was so long it was always Prince Charles. Is this something that Prince Charles might even back to something in itself? Or, potentially trying to um trying to start handing out reparations to some of the former colonies. Phoenix, go ahead and unmute your mic. Peace and blessings, love and reparations to the royal family. Um the answer to your question is is King Charles I, you know, it's just one of those things and and, and you, thank you for asking that question because it did you know, prompt me to start thinking a little deeper about this and like the overall picture of it in the world and the state of the world right now. And um, they gonna owe the whole world, right? So will they do it willingly? No. And I'm not being negative because I'm the most optimistic person in the world. But you asking that question like that? Um, Nah, and then knowing that they owned a third of the world and they raped and pillaged and damaged and 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 molested everything around it. it no, nah, they're not gonna do that. Not willingly. You feel me? So not willingly. So I would say that you know, uh I'm, you know, I'm all about you know, different strategies and pushing that hand to make it happen. But that's, you know, that's the British way. And, you know, we got things to worry about over here. So, um, yeah, nope. But thank you for letting me speak. 
you make a valid point, sister. And I also want to get to that one thing. I, I know you said we got things to worry about over here, but let us not forget also, like I said, before um, before um, America, you know, go to slavery, they took it over from their cousins, uh, the, the British, who had us enslaved right here. And I agree with you, what you're saying. If the actual amount, amount the debt came up that was old, and you start having people from all over the world start knocking on that door like, hey, you owe us, you owe us, you owe us. I think realistically they say, well, damn, how can we pay all these people? Because Great Britain ain't, ain't popping the way it once was popping. So, and Great Britain, I'm sorry, go ahead, sister. I'm sorry, Minnesota. I think it's to a very um, current state of affairs. Mm-hmm. Um, right now with because you mentioned germany and you know and then i'm starting to look at all of the the countries in nato and how we're on the brink of you know major skirmishes happening you know what i'm saying so there's a lot going on in the world so mm, if i don't know if it's it's just going to be something that happens right away put it that way and I'm in agreement with you, sister. I mean, look how long it's been. I mean, that this, this topic is really starting to gain steam. Yes, it's been talked about for over 100 years, but now it's really it's really gained steam to the point that people really talk about it all the time. So I'm in agreement with you. Like you said, we're starting to see it pop up all over the world. People are, you know, putting their two cents in. Nations are saying, hey, you owe us, you owe us. And these nations aren't stupid. France and, and, and the UK, they thinking like, hey, if we, if we ever – decided to go ahead and pay these people a fraction of what we really owe them, we are going to be the ones that's going to be a third world country overnight. So they got to they gotta think about how they're going to actually protect themselves as well, how they're going to go ahead and not not get bankrupt. So believe you me, that's what they think in the back of my mind. Another thing they think, like, I ain't got to pay these jigaboos anything. What was done was done. There's nothing they can do. We got the military might. All they can do is sit up there and whine and march. There's nothing they're going to do. They do. And I believe that if we actually came together as a people right here, we could actually get this without any physical altercation. But we still haven't learned how to use what we need to use. So until we do that, we're gonna still we're gonna still be behind. And that's black people. That's black people globally as well too. There's no way in hell that those nations in West Africa who make and break France. Okay, you take all of these the the the. the, the, the Francicon or whatever they call them, nations or whatever, or over in, in, in West Africa, if they were to tell France to kiss their ass tomorrow, France would, France would be worse off than damn Ethiopia was in the 80s. But they're not going to do that. They're going to sit, sit up there. They're going to let these people come in there and use their currency, take everything and this and that, do all of the um, do all of the um, industrial work, work, all of this, all of this stuff. While you get left behind, you becoming a wholesale on your own land. You control nothing. The resources that you control nothing. So globally, this is an issue that that all black people are suffering from. And until we actually, you know, man up, woman up, we're gonna constantly be dealing with this this nonsense right here. Queen B, go ahead and for everybody that's in this space, make sure you follow the news total. Make sure you follow the host and the co-host. Also, you can support us on Cash App. That is dollar sign news total. That is dollar sign news total. We're gonna go to Queen B. Then we're going to go to Christopher. Then we're going to get to you, Original, and Ray. So, Queen B, go ahead and unmute your mic. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak, News Toter. So, uh, I've, I think everybody has pretty much made, you know, uh, some pretty good points. Um, the first thing I want to say is my personal opinion about the Queen dying, I really don't care. I mean, I knew it was going to happen sooner or later. She's what she was 96, I think, years old, and um, she was getting frail and all that. So at some point, we knew that uh, it was going to come to an end for her. But I do think one of the things that you said, News told her that I didn't realize, um, or somebody said she was doing things for people, but it was in private. I have a problem with that um, because someone in her role. Uh, with her being world renowned again, the most uh, uh, renowned or revered public figure, you know, I would say still probably put the Pope in there too, as uh, you know that figurehead. Um, you know, she could have been leading by example in what she was going to be doing for Black people, or you know, these good things that she was doing in Africa. She should have been talking about that. 
um, publicly, you know, unless she was afraid that it was going to damage her privilege, which is usually what the problem is, you know, when it comes to these type of things. So, but I do think in terms of the reparations that um, definitely, I think now is the time with this movement picking up steam and I'm going to throw something out there. Maybe you guys could tell me how you feel about this, but look, if Harry want to claim that he liked black people so much, then I think Harry ought to be helping, you know, to, to get reparations. I think he spent some time over in Africa too, but you know, and, and if these people feel so bad and, you know, and, and they believe there was an injustice, then I think that he ought to be one of these people leading it to, to make sure that there is justice, you know, for those wrongs that were done and still being committed, you know, by, by this, by this family. So those are the thoughts that I have um, about, uh, you know, her death and, you know, moving forward. And in terms of, of reparations, I, I definitely think, you know, this is uh, something that is black people need to keep the pressure on. And you're right. You know, it's going to be those people who, you know, I don't like to call people coons, but these people who don't agree, whatever. I think we outnumber them. I think there's when, when you when the case is made for reparations, most people really feel like, yeah, it's right. You know, once they understand, you know, what the claim is all about. So I do believe and agree that we need to continue the pressure, whether it's global or whatever. I, I do think Phoenix was right. We have our own issues over here in the country. We need to continue on the path that we're going. Um, you know, um, when I read that article, that part of that article. So when you were saying that she also oh, really, look, you you are the um the most powerful woman on earth. You're the most beloved, like you said, uh, especially we could say um figurehead political icon that is that's on earth. You have a position that that can't be taken away from you until you die. You're the queen of England, so you could have got right out there and you could have said stuff from the jump. You like you could like I said, you could have talked about going back to the civil rights movement over here in America, you could have talked about all of those nations that were winning their independence in Africa and the Caribbean and whatnot. There's plenty that you could have done with the whole George Floyd thing and Black Lives Matter. You could have spoke up that even though you're an older woman. So I'm with you. When people start talking about, well, they was doing all of this in private and this and that, you have to really kind of take that with a grain of salt because there was nothing to stop her from actually voicing uh, her concern and, and, and letting everybody know what side of history she stood on. That was so dainty and, and afraid when at times people admire her courage and her fire, even though she may not, she may not seem to have it like outgoingly or whatever, they still acknowledge her strength and whatnot. So not so there would have been no issue in sitting up here dancing at a ball with a, a with a Kuma back in, in Ghana back in the sixties as, as they were getting the independence, you know, that, that's nice for a photo op and everything, but at the end of the day, that really still doesn't cut the mustard. So I'm in, I'm in agreements with you on that. Uh, Christopher, go ahead and unmute your mic. Thank you. Um, I just had a few quick questions. Um, with Queen Elizabeth, um, I remember reading an article back when the, when the whole Meghan Markle thing was going on, and it was stating that the Queen, with her staff, they didn't hire anyone of color until like 20, 25 years ago. So that's one issue that I had with the whole dynasty family over there. And the other is on a faith for the, the spatula, um, all the family jewels that they have that was stolen out of different parts of Africa, the diamonds, the rubies, everything. She could have returned and even the artifacts that are in the museums there from different tribes. She could have returned all of that to the the tribes of where they belong. Um, and when it comes to reparations, I, I, I know how and I see how reparations are going to work for us in the U.S., but for other countries, uh, would it work in the same way like do the other countries have documents like so many of us have here here that 
where we could trace our ancestors back to the 1850s or 40s. Like, how would reparations work for other people across the globe? Now, that much, I, I, I really couldn't tell you. Like I said, one thing with Great Britain is that the paperwork is talking about somebody who was a violator on, on, on damn near every continent that, with the exception of Antarctica. So the actual paperwork that they would have to, you know, that they would have to do, because look, if we're going to be honest, like I said, they would owe stuff right here. This is one thing we kind of forget over here in America that we only assume that, you know, it's America that owes reparations. But if we really want to break it down, if we really want to break it down, we got uh, we got America, we got Great Britain, people that was caught up in, in the territory that France owned and Spain owned. You got them as well too. So let's not forget the Louisiana Purchase. Okay, you had slaves right down that area too. So if you're really talking about just the the American Negro, so to speak, you're talking about a potential reparation claim with with four. The powers right now. I mean, for world powers. Now, I know the easiest thing would be just to concentrate on, you know, just to concentrate on America. Because when you cause when you talk about going back to the seventeen hundreds and stuff like that, you know, things get a little bit, you know, a little dicey to say the least. Some of our people may not have been over here. Some of our people may have been over here. Some of them, you know, some of them may not have came until you know America was an actual country in itself. So. I don't know how you can do. Maybe if you if you had a, a relative that didn't get here to eighteen, twelve, or whatever, you know, you really couldn't make a reparation claim against um, France or, or or whatever like that. That's kind of dicey in terms of the world thing as well, too. You know, I don't know. They would pretty much have to have to handle their own affairs or whatever. You got Caricom down in the Caribbean for the uh, the, the Caribbean brothers and sisters like that, so. As a black American, my main issue is just right here because, like I say, it's pretty easy to trace your roots back back here. I feel like there's enough senses and whatnot that you can go back and on at least one side of your family, you should be able to trace them back. I mean, I can trace back on both sides, but at least on one side, you should be able to trace it back and find out exactly what it was. Getting back to your thing about her and the, um, about, um, because one of my co-hosts, Ray, he said the same thing, that it, it was a long time before they actually had, um, you know, black workers and stuff working for them and stuff. So, you know, to me, that doesn't really sound that surprising either. I mean, that's not that's not shocking that that they will eventually start to bring black people in. You know, maybe as as late as, as thirty years ago or whatever. So, like I said, man, we talking about the UK. We talking about Great Britain. We talking about people. I mean, that I mean, we talk about the the racism of racism of America and whatnot, but. But these are the these are the, the Americans' uh, grandfather here. This is their daddy here. This is where they get it from. That the apple don't fall far from the tree. So we have to always consider that as well too. Like who we actually talking about? I mean, they may have looked towards that Negro, but nonetheless, they still were just as vicious. Rivera, go ahead and unmute your mic, bro. Um. So. Queen B, she mentioned something about Prince Harry and, uh, you know, his it, it, interracial relationship or the, the marriage he's in with Meghan Markle. Um, <clears throat> I think what's interesting, I think they removed the one, not necessarily from the royal family, but from the, uh, the title um, that they have with the prince and all that, or the crown title. Um, and that's it's really convenient because he, he did it like a couple of years ago, I believe. Um, I think there's going to be, I think it's going to be a long battle for that. Um, that might have been just, yeah, he did do some UNICEF stuff. But even then, the, that whole family's got like a bunch of weird like photos and ties. There's supposedly a picture of, uh, the Queen, you know, in the 1930s, throwing up a um, Hail Hitler sign. And then, obviously, that picture in the, the 90s or the late 90s or the, the uh, 2000s of Harry wearing the, uh, the, the Nazi symbol on his arm. Some weird shit with that family that I, I just wouldn't even want to fuck with them. Like, as far as asking for anything. Because it's, it's just like here in America. 
it's a bunch of neglect and you know oh we didn't mean to and all that other stupid shit so i think that it'll be a long long fight even with her being dead honestly thank god the queen is dead um more of these motherfuckers can go ahead and hit the planet um <laughs> but <laughs> at the end of the day we just need to we need to stick to what we're doing here in america let them Europeans and the tablets and all that, you know, deal with whatever they want to deal with over there in Europe. No, no doubt, no doubt. We're, and I, I'll say this right here. We also got to remember, I know you were saying the uniforms and stuff like that they had on and Harry and stuff, and I think I remember that as well, too. We, we are talking about, like, some of the biggest colonizers in the history of the world. <laughs> so, like, if they had some of these, they had some of these outfits on and whatnot, I'd be like, and we all grown up in this place, but it surprised any of us. I mean, really, we, we talking about like, like, and, and I mentioned this, and I keep saying this, and, and we all know it. One third of the world was colonized. I mean, think about the technology they had at the time. Yeah, they had guns and they had bigger boats and everybody else, but my God, think if they had anything remotely close to what you have now, the entire world would have been colonized, and the entire world would have been a slave. So. Just to put that into perspective, so it, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, they used to go to South Africa, and I know that the, the husband, the one that died, her, the Queen's husband, he used to go and do his safaris and this and that. I mean, I mean, please. I mean, these people felt like people were here to serve them. If we want to be totally honest, they felt like most of us were here to serve them and and, and, and to jump at they, every man and whatnot. And like I said, I don't personally know the woman. I, I definitely don't wish her any ill will, anything of that nature like that as well either, but... I mean, we just have to be real. When we're talking about all of the Western nations in Europe, they're all colonizers. They're all out for self. And they all believe in exploitation. Always have. And not a one of them feel guilty about the resources that they, they come by. If they had to do it again, people could sit up there and pretend or whatever and say, well, you know, that was back then and we didn't know any better. If those very same people had to do it again, if you put them in the same predicament, you let them know, like, what's going to happen and how the world's going to change if you do this with you do that. He's there to go ahead and do the same thing. And that same descendants that's over here in this country talking noise, talking about that they weren't alive at this time and they didn't have anything to do with that and, and they're not and they're not racist and this and that. Because if you was just go ahead and ask you, you're like, okay, you're not a racist individual. And since you agree that the, the half of the things that your race has came by force and, and, and just murder and thieving and everything else, how about this? How about we do an equitable thing? How about we split up these resources? How about we split up this land. Oh, oh no, no, no. I think they white now. It's how red their face will get and whatnot. So it's just a little game that we like to play and whatnot. Because like I say, if these people had to do the exact same thing again in terms of colonizing the world, taking everything by force, all like like somebody mentioned, all the damn gold they got from Africa and all over the world, the Americas and, and Australia and Asia, any other place that they can get their hands on, they still got them in their coffins to this very day. These, these people will sit up there. They'll loan you back your artifacts. They'll they'll let you have a couple of them. <laughs> Things that they, they, they got damn BS paintings and whatnot back in the 13th, 14th century that they talk about as priceless, yet you have artifacts from Africa and all over the place, it's just as priceless as that right there. You know, some of those bronze sculptures and stuff from West Africa and, and those areas, like, like all those other places, just as priceless. And they'll sit up there and they'll, and they'll act like they're doing you a favor to loan you or let you let you hold your own stuff for a little bit. So please, original, go ahead and unmute your mic, bro. And we're going to get to you next, Phoenix, and then we're going to get to you, uh, Ray. Yeah, you're right about that because that uh, that topic came up about uh, uh, the artifacts that they have in the British Museum, and he said he said they uh, what was the word? I can't think of the word that he used. He said they curated these items. He didn't want to, and the and the, and the person that he was talking to, who this uh, whatever the guy was, he said, but you stole them though, right? And you could see him just trying to dodge and not wanting to focus on the issue. But what I want to what I want to comment on, uh, Ms. Holder, is this. Now you mentioned something about uh, rules, and this is why it is so important for all of us in this room to push 
extremely hard and to try to uh to try to connect with other people of like mind there are quite a, as you all know there are quite a number of black people that they are fighting vehemently to ensure that white people maintain what they have the area of atlanta where i live right you do you not here where i live i don't live far from me and i don't live far from remember uh Bronner Brothers Hair Care, I don't live far from their old home. home. And the, the Bronner Brother home just sold recently. It wasn't on the market. It was sold in refab and, and it wasn't on the market that long. The house sold for $650,000. And so, but one of the guys who lives not far from the Bronner Brother house, when he purchased his home, he's a retired educator. And he, he had a black realtor. And this black realtor told him um, his house is, is newly built. But his, his, this black realtor told him that he should consider moving to this area they call Vining, which is in Cobb County, out near what they, what they call uh, Cumberland Mall. And he told him, I don't know anybody in Vining. He said, I, I grew up over here on the south side of Atlanta. And this is where I want to live. So as long as we have these stupid people like that who feel that whatever white folks have, we need to try to get close to them because she, this realtor told him that if he bought the house in Vining, that it would appreciate and value quicker and more than purchasing a house over here in Southwest Atlanta. These are the things that, these are some of the vestiges of Slave, that slave mindset that we are still dealing with to this day, and so I just want to I just want to share that because when you said black rule, we are still going to have to fight, and I mean it's going it's going to be a bloody fight to get rid of some of these people. I don't know if you ever seen this documentary. It's called uh, uh, Five. And so what happened is it was. After about what forty years or so, they had to release all this information from like the civil rights movement, and some of the documents that they found it was like where they had you know met to discuss their strategy, and what they found was they found everybody named everybody named at this meeting except for this one guy, so they approached him and said, "You were a spy, wasn't you?" And he was like, "It's obvious that he was a spy." But I think, see, the reason still goes on is that see, when we catch these people as spies, we don't, uh, I'll say, let them go to church one Sunday and burn the damn house down. We don't put sugar or uh, sand in their gas tank to tear up their car. Because we're not, we're not dealing with the spies that are disrupting our progress is one of the re reasons why, you know, other people black rule. So I think until we begin to do stuff like that, with, you know, burn the house down, hey, as long as we know they're a spy and they just happen to be in it, hey, oh, well, you know, you was a spy. Just like when they tried to blame uh, Winnie Mandela uh, for that, uh, that uh, what they call it, that uh, the South African necklace where they put a tie around their neck and set it on fire, you know, when they found out that they were spies. But she didn't have anything to do with it, though, you know, and she didn't get the one. And she had told, and she was in a meeting with some people, and she said, uh, she was like a, uh, she was, what they call it, uh, uh, clairvoyant. And she said, something is not right here. There's a person here that shouldn't be here. And she told this group of people who this person was and that they were the spy. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't believe it. And later on down the work, later on down the road, they found out that the fool was a spy. And if they had listened to Sister, right, they could have got his butt up out of there and reduced the damage that he was doing to him. So I just want to say that, and I'll land on that, that we we are definitely going to have to, uh, when, when people can't understand about black rule, this is what, that's what it's going to take for us to get black rule. We're going to have to take care, of, we're going to take care of the spies, the agents, the sellouts, the, or whatever you want to call them. But that has to be done, and I'll land on that.
And to that point, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to Phoenix. But you made a valid point. We're talking about, you you mentioned Winnie Mandela. And here's my thing. Why didn't any of the, um, why didn't Jamaica honor Winnie Mandela? Now, I know she was never the head of state of of Jamaica, this and that. But why wasn't Winnie Mandela honored, you know, by some of these um, black nations and whatnot? When she died, she didn't get a a, a hero's welcome. She didn't get a hero's um, celebration. You know, she deserved it. I know, because I know her. Nelson, I'm sorry. I said because she was black. They don't see they don't see value in anything that's black. That's why she didn't get that hero's welcome. And this is the same thing. What I told you about the realtor that told one of my neighbors that um, he should he should buy a house in Vining versus buying a house over here on the south side of Atlanta. It's that that has been permeated. That has permeated the mind of black people around the globe, and it's difficult. Because what was that? What was that guy named? Uh, uh, Naim Osbar. He had what is that? Uh, breaking the psychological chains. Or, I can't think of the name of the book. It's, it's an old text, but it's, it's it's very powerful. Breaking those chains of psychological slavery. I think that's the name of it. But that is why, because people are not willing to let go, and and, and as long as they are in that fear mode. They're not. They're not any use. For, they could be. They're not of any use for us at all. And I have a plan again. Sorry about that. Oh no, you good. You know, like I, I'm just saying that Winnie, she didn't get the um, respect that she did. Everybody tried to, you know, tarnish her name as she died and talk about she was doing this and she was doing that. Winnie was trying to survive and live. You know, she had to do what she had to do. And you know, it's a shame that she never got that level of respect. She fought for her people. She died for her people. She loved her people. She had to get down and dirty. So, I mean, she never when, got that when, level of when, I'm sorry, Ms. Toner. Um, Aviva is there, Daria Tubman, if you ask. Um, she was the closest thing to it. Um, because remember, her husband was locked up for 27 years. And so she kept the movement going. She had to have kept the movement going for him to come out and become president of the country that was newly free and he was locked up for 27 years not much he could be doing while he was locked up so in my mind Winnie is like definitely the queen of South Africa and they should definitely put a whole lot of respect on her name and spirit and honor her more than they would honor or anybody would honor uh, Queen Elizabeth because she was instrumental in stopping apartheid so um I, you know, I just wanted to say this and why I had originally, uh, Helma, in Original Blood, you are cooking. I mean, everything, and New Code, everybody on the stage is really cooking and coming with a lot of wisdom about, it, and, and, you know, basically, the, you know, global white supremacy. That's what it is. And no, they're not going to want to give it up, you know, freely. Oh, yeah. We, I mean, we're acting like we're talking about really nice, good people. I think that we forget in order to take over a whole planet, you have to be some damn dirty, dog ass, mean and ass people and have a total I mean, and then to lock it down the way that it is and then news told her for you to say that everybody speaks English. In order to change everybody's tongue, I mean, in the beginning when they were laying the foundation down, they had to be really mean about about this, right? All over the globe. So now, I'll, I'll, you know, we money, you know, but back then, to get people to 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 let go of their culture, their um, their language, uh bow down. I mean, they even took people's sexuality. They used every every weapon in the book to their global agenda. So, and it's a European agenda. It don't matter what country it is. They just happen to do it best. So, y'all, I mean, like, and like Original Blood said, oh, it's gone. We're going to have to get down and dirty to get what we need. And everybody, you know, is. And there's so many people that are off code. I mean, <laughs> it's ridiculous. You got a whole planet that's off code. I mean, basically, we're the only ones that fight against it. And then some, some Caribbean, some Jamaicans, you know, and some Ethiopians and, 
and you know they were the only ones that weren't really colonized so we know that they fight against I mean, we know that, that uh south africans and so we do have some people that are like-minded throughout the globe it's just that there's so many spaces um in between that are not so we we gotta hold it down over here and then once you know foundational black american american freedmen you know get what we need to get done then you know and during the process hopefully people will become more on code but we're not doing we're doing it for us and i land there definitely definitely i definitely agree with what you're saying sister and that's one reason why i like to watch shows like game of thrones and stuff when it came on because it showed you the true essence of these people like these people listen <laughs> like these people will, will, will cut a child up out of a mother's stomach and not think twice about it if it means that they're gonna be able to get a, a new piece of land so that's why i enjoy watching actually a, a lot of this stuff like the mid east European dramas and shows like I write and watch it because I'm like, damn. Sometimes I think we forget because we get people speaking proper English and 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 their syllables are so nice and this and that. Like, please, this is this is how these people came to power here by just being ruthless and not giving a damn. And until you match that, then hey, you just gonna be cannon fodder. Like, and that, that's just the way it is. So I, I'm in agreement with you, like you saying, like you saying what what we talking about. Uh, Winnie uh, Mandela, Winnie Mandela, every nation, every black nation in the world should have went ahead and, and brought their flag down half stands for that woman when she died, for what she did. I, we give Nelson all the credit, this and that, and Nelson th Nelson was in prison and he took all kind of abuse and stuff like this and that, but this woman was out there on the street, was targeted, people were trying to kill her, do anything they could to get to him as well. So people kind of forget exactly the kind of hell that she had to live through and she had to go through and whatnot. So she was a queen of South Africa. She'll always be a queen of South Africa to me and my personal and whatnot. So I see Ray, he has some connection issues. So he's going to try to get back up in here because he has some. He, he just texted me, let me know that he was having some hey, connection let issues. Let me share this with you about Winnie Mandela. Go ahead. A friend, a friend of mine had traveled to South Africa some years ago. And so what happened is, Winnie Mandela, she, her house was like a fortress. It had a, it had a, and, and all the uh, trees in the back of her house were just cleared out. So what happened is, uh, uh, they were standing outside of her gate. And so somebody got word to her that there were some black Americans that came that was at the gate wanting to, you know, just to say hi to her. And she came out and she communed with them. But one thing about her, I would say this, what, what I was told, she did, she hated white folks. She she knew the evil, that, the evil that they had inflicted on us on a global scale. See, uh, w w when, when my friend, when they got there, there was a lot of white folks out there, out there at the gate and she wouldn't come out. Cause she she did she did not want to deal with those inherently evil people, and even when I tell people that white people are inherently evil, they say, "How can you condemn a whole group of people?" I said, "I tell you what, if there are some good white people in this universe, it is so negligible to where it wouldn't even make a difference." So yes, that's why I say they are inherently evil. But she did that. She came out and she greeted my friend and all the other. All uh, the black people, and unfortunately, was the white folks out there too. But she didn't. She she knew the real deal. She knew about them, and she was not. She, she didn't want anything to do with them. And then when when what was even worse that most people don't talk about when Nelson and Taylor got out of prison, took them to, somebody said he was lobotomized. I don't know, but he allowed them to put a wedge between him and her when they got a divorce and he was claiming she was doing this, that, whatever, whatever. And he, unfortunately, he trusted the white folks more than he trusted her. And she waited on him for 27 years while he was in prison. She was still, she still carried on the fight. But that's what he did to her after what, after how she kept his name alive and kept the, and kept the fight alive for her like that. That's a damn shame. And I land. I think I think originally he wasn't lobotomized, but I think you have to be honest. I mean, the man was in prison almost thirty years. He was broken in there. I mean, they they broke him in there. Like we have to be honest. Um, you, you go in there one way, and we could we, we know how bad the prisons are here in America. So you could probably 
multiply that times 10 in a place like South Africa. Okay, who knows what kind of conditions and often they came in and they just beat on him and beat on him. Who knows the amount of people that they, they told him every day that they were going to kill until he gave up information, this and that. So, you know, I know a lot of people, um, they go in on Nelson on that and they were saying that, and I don't disagree. I believe that the man was broken. I believe that he was beaten in that. Because think about it. Let's be honest. Who, Nelson Mandela got freed. And within a few years, he was the actual president of South Africa. Like, I mean, it just, you know, certain things just don't seem right. You've been locked up for 30-some years or whatever, and you're going to become the president of South Africa. Mind you, you're the majority, but yet your people still are going to be the poorest people in this in this country. They're still going to have the worst land. They're still going to, they're not going to have any of the actual resources that should belong to them. So that was just pretty much, you know, was, um, they just use Nelson as a front man or whatever. Even now, you talk about it, you got all these other black people that have been present and since that. But yeah, you know, the power is still controlled by whites over there in South Africa. And it's going to stay that way. As long as they have the resources and stuff like that, it's going to stay that way until they stand up for them themselves. So I didn't want to get off track. I, you know, we are talking about Winnie. Like I say, I, I get Winnie her due. And I just felt like, you know, the same way, you know, in a nation like Jamaica, which is predominantly black or whatever, I'm wondering, you know, and I could be wrong. I'm wondering at the time that Winnie Mandela died, did they go ahead and did they have any special thing for Winnie Mandela? Did they have any special service or did they have any special, you know, did the government pay homage to this woman like this? Because her name was dragged through the mud and she'll not be remembered as what she was a hero. So that just, I, you know, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to, um, well too far off of the topic or whatever but you know like I say I do give Winnie Mandela her flowers even though she's gone she was a courageous woman and she stood by her man you know like, like I say here's the between but like I said he also broke that man in there too so the Nelson Mandela that went into prison was not the same when they came out it just it just couldn't be it wasn't going to be that way and they, they, they made sure they broke him and you know that's the way we, we know how white supremacy works. I mean, so unfortunately that brother, he had to pay the price and he did pay the price. And it, it, it took years, it took years away from his life and it took, and it destroyed his marriage. So it's really nothing, you know, nothing that you can really take away from that. I get with it. And, um, and like I said, getting back, just getting back to Queen Elizabeth and whatnot. Um, if there's anybody that's in the discussion or anything, in, in the room that wants to add to anything that we said tonight, then please feel free to come up and, and get on the mic. We'll definitely allow you to go ahead and, and say what you need to say. If not, then we may go ahead and close the space down because I feel like we had a pretty good um, conversation. We don't want to extend it beyond what it actually needs to be extended. If anybody would like to speak, then please, like I say, uh, if any of our speakers, and we had some, and I'm glad that we had our sister speaking tonight too, Ron. Um, we were trying to get our sisters for the last couple of spaces to come up, but we're able to get a we able to get Phoenix and Queen B up in here tonight. So we're definitely definitely glad about that. DJ, what's going on? I ain't, I ain't heard from you in a minute, man. Hey, your apologies dropped. Okay, hey, original blood. I posted that in the jump. Should be on the far left, I believe. Whatever that was, original blood. If you still up there, bro. Yeah, I believe original, um, he may have just dropped because he was just up here. So, he okay, he went back down to listening. So, he is still in the Jumbotron. Trevor, I know you requested to um, speak. Is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah, sorry, I was having some Wi-Fi issues. I just um, wanted to wanted to make a point. I see that um, Black Twitter had been trending. At first, it said 517K, and then for some reason, when I went to screenshot it and dropped down to 473k however that's still a large number and i just wanted to make the point that it's it's wonderful it's beautiful to see how black twitter is trending on on you know uh the the, the queen but i wish we could trend like that when it comes to anti-blackness when it comes to reparations it comes to whatever it is that we are trying to do but it seems like we can't trend for that, but we can trend for this this old colonial hag out here. You know, um, it was another point that I wanted to make. But when a 
are we going to be able to trend that hard? And I know how we can't because we have a lot of actually from all over the world that's participating in this conversation of the queen. But when us black Americans is talking about reparation, we got more people talking down on us than we have people that's bigging us up and that's trying to help us get what it is that we need to get. Knowing good and well, when we get what we get, it's still somewhat going to benefit them to a certain degree. They're still going to be trying to eat off of that, you know. Then there was the, the, the case of the woman, I forgot her name, um, some professor at the Mellon College or whatever. And you see when she came out talking smack about black Americans or Akatas and being extremely disrespectful, everybody had something to say to us about it when we was calling it out. Okay, well, now she makes a comment about the queen, and here it is. White people are like, well, you know, oh, she needs to have her job snatched up. Okay, now you all care. You didn't care when it was anti-black towards black Americans, but now that she's saying something about your precious queen, now you want her job snatched. And I just find that to be a little bit funny, and I just wanted to bring that up, and I'll land right there. You know, Trevor, I saw that before this space. I saw, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, damn, why is Black Twitter trending like that? I saw it. I'm like, yeah, you're right. It was like, it had like 500 some thousand like tweets. I'm like, damn, well, what's going on over there? I'm like, I know it can't all be about the queen now. I mean, I, I know Black Twitter, Black Twitter is wild and whatnot. Like, but I know this can't all be about the queen of England. Go ahead, Phoenix. I love that, that trouble brought that up. Um, I didn't see it, but. I mean, you have it in the title, you know what I'm saying? People got it in the title, and then these rooms are big, and, and you know, a lot of the rooms. But I do want to make a point about that, is that, you know, that's where flat blackness come in at. You see what I'm saying? Like, we're not, there's no ethnic group around. Like, we all just black, and we twin trending because, you see how they try to, how they try to just to market us and just, we ain't talking about, we talking about all kind of stuff. Um, she was a little bit of the conversation, but what our conversation is about is white supremacy and global takeover. And you know what I'm saying? We damn sure ain't crying. So, and having 12 days of mourning. No, we talking about why we ain't mourning uh, Miss Winnie Mandela. I mean, back, you know, that's who I look up to. You know what I mean? That's my queen and, 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 and women like and, and men around the globe that's doing the work to get us from under this oppression so that we can experience you know some heaven on earth as we should have you ever thought about this like i'm going on a tangent because i'm just like so the the planet was never in such a critical state when all of the aboriginal about the earth had stewardship over it, right? Like we have the planet and, uh, and all people all over the planet, which you know, melanated people, of course. Um, the planet was functioning and thriving, you know, and we could go anywhere, get all kind of food and, and things like that. We didn't have the things that are important to us now was never important to the real stewards of the planet which is why they were able to preserve the planet for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years, if you believe some of your biblical texts and your ancient texts. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's time for, for certain ideologies and things like that to get out the paint. Because not only are we trying to heal and, and, and get restorative justice and reparations for ourselves, I mean, but there's a whole globe that's, that's not about reparations, but um, where the, the planet is being, you know, mucked up. So you can, we can get their money, you know, but if our kids don't have nowhere to stay and play and have some water, so we have to think of on a multi-pronged level to me, you know, like we need all our scientists, we need all our engineers, we need to get everybody on deck because we have a lot of work to do and a lot of work to do to protect protect ourselves and if we're talking about we want to do that in the third over and have certain spaces for ourselves we got to get the building and i'm a land man because i can go on forever but thank you oh no you was cooking sis i was listening <laughs> hey i'm in agreement with you i'm just sitting back listening and whatnot so like i i enjoy hearing your point of view so uh, 
everybody can tell you, like, I mean, we, we pretty much let people just go ahead and, and get get it in there. So I definitely enjoyed your point of view. I see my man is up in here in Secret Sister. So, Chase, go ahead and unmute your mic, and then we're going to get to you, Secret Sister. No, brother, you know I got to let the sister go first. No doubt. Secret Sister, you there? Yes. Um, Phoenix Star. That, that's Phoenix Star. Um, I see you have made um, inquiries to me. Um, I'm right here, so I brought it right to you. So make sure you say what you were saying, um, you know, to me. And please say it with your chest. Okay, sisters, I don't know what happened, but we definitely don't want to derail the conversation, y'all. So we're going to kind of just keep it, keep it on here because we're not going to be on here much longer. So we want to go out on a, on a positive note. You know, I got love for you, Secret Sisters. So you, you already know that, Phoenix. Uh, I want you guys to kind of just... Uh, um, I can just take it in the back room, back area, because we don't want to want to do that. I, I just, you know what I'm saying? I want to keep it rolling, keep the conversation. We ain't going to be on much longer. So, um, my secret sister, now, if there's something you want to add to the discussion, you know, I'm more than more than happy to hear you, sister, but I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear any beefing, y'all. So, if it's going to be a back and forth, let's, let's kind of just not do that. I have respect for the sisters. I have respect for y'all. So, we just want to go ahead and keep this thing focused. This has been ladies of hope. Focus I came to tonight that has contributed to the conversation. It's been a nice conversation. So I just want to kind of, as much as possible, try to keep it on that. Everybody's in the space. I see we got quite a few people left in there that's not following News Soda. Please make sure you follow News Soda, the number one curator of black news today in America, the largest black owned news curation platform there is. So make sure you guys are following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And also, if you'd like to contribute to the new black media, you can do that on cat. It's up in the jumbotron. Our cash app is dollar sign news total. That is dollar sign news total. If you don't have a cash app, we have our Venmo and PayPal also up in the jumbotron. So, secret sister love, I'm gonna kick it back to you, Phoenix. I see you got your hand up. So please, sisters, let's not have any back and forth. I'm, I'm asking y'all nicely. I don't want to put anybody down to listen. Uh, Mister, kind enough to let. You go in front of him secret, even though he had his hand up. So let's go ahead and let's keep it let's keep it respectable as much as we can, ladies. All right, secret sister, go ahead and unmute your mic. Okay, let's talk about this queen. Um my my feeling on it, Queen, is um I personally like I feel like what goes over there, what going on over there is for them. Um this is just me. Um I truthfully, the last time I gave a, like gave any dams about over there is when uh, Lady Di was there. And of course, we all know she probably was killed over there, but that's their problem. Me, I want to focus on our family's problem and how we can come together and make our own country. And I think the first thing would be to, um, first of all, open up relationships with each other, get to know each other from the white man system. This is what I feel. And that system is their system. Um, we coming up with like, like DJ, you, we are coming up. We're very innovative. Okay. And we are coming up with some very good ways and how we can connect without them getting in our business so on these sites this is just like i would just like surfacing things and then i want to go in private zooms and talk with my family because on here these white people come up here too much and x too much of our business what does that mean what does that and we feel um innate to answer them because we have always been respectful people and i'm a land right there Hey, thank you, sister. I appreciate you. You know, I got love for you speaking. Always glad to have you up in the space. So I'm glad to hear my sister. I hope that you're doing well tonight. We're going to move it to Chase, the art, and then we're going get, to get back to you, Phoenix. So, Chase, go ahead and unmute your mic. Yes, sir, brother. Thank you. Uh, news talk. Where'd Chief go? 
But anyway, uh, man, peace and blessings to everybody, the family. I love you all. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, one thing that I wanted to bring up that I didn't hear too many people speak about today was what exactly is Prince Charles getting ready to inherit? So I'm going to go ahead and not beat around the bush. He's getting ready to inherit 56 countries and 2.6 billion people. So this is what I propose to the family. Okay, we all know how uh, laws, you know, you know, the only thing that you can inherit is monies, land, and property. Okay. How can another human being in 2022 inherit 2.6 billion people? That absolutely makes no damn sense. Unless, unless some folks are still enslaved. And the last time I checked, us folks here in America was emancipated in 1865. I'm just saying, I wanted to put that out there, you know, in case the family didn't know. But much respect to you, News told it. I just wanted to bring something that uh, we need to be aware of or what's you going made, on. You, you made an interesting point there, brother. I'm glad that you did bring that up because, you know, when we think about Great Britain, when we think about the UK or whatever, England, whatever you want to call it, we think that all of the nations that was colonized by them, that they have gained their independence. So... I know you said that they're gonna. He's gonna inherit fifty-six countries and two point some billion people. So those countries that you're talking about, are you saying that those countries are still under British rule, basically? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's exactly what I'm saying. He inherits. He inherits all of this land and the people that are on them. interesting you know what I'm i didn't think about that you know like i say we and like i said like I, and i think i said it earlier in here that believe it or not whether whether they're actually under british rule or or, or supposedly free or whatever that you know great britain still let's be for real they still control these people behind the scenes they, they own their politicians they own the resources and this and that so it, it's just kind of like you have an colonialism you have it also in these um in these island nations and all throughout the the world and whatnot as well too. Now, one thing I will ask you about this: Jamaica, Jamaica is own news. Told us Jamaica is owned. I don't mean to cut your wisdom, but Jamaica is owned by Great Britain. Just wanted to put that out there. So I mean, I just don't see how that's possible in 2022 that you can inherit people unless those people are considered property. If they're considered property, then you can be inherited. So I'm just saying we were emancipated in 1865. And I'll stand here. If anybody want to do the quick, quick Google search and prove me wrong. You know, Let me ask you I'm one quick question. Yes, sir. Let Go me ahead. ask you one quick question, Chase, now. Because I, I, at 2.6 billion, that's a lot of people. So I'm thinking in, in your figures, too, you must be also included in India as well. Yes, sir. Okay, just checking because I know India has well over a billion people, so I, I know that you, if, if they had that kind of the, the, the kind of population you're talking about, then because we, we we do know that Great Britain also colonized India for a long time. Now India is supposed to be one of the up and coming countries, and and this and that or whatever. So, um, military wise, also they're supposed to have a pretty a pretty nice military. So. They got a nuclear bomb. Yeah. So this is my issue. You know, India is 50 times the size, or 100 times the size Great Britain is, has more people, has a bigger land mass, has a military that could that could give Great Britain all kind of issues. Why would India be, called, be still under, under colonial rule with Great Britain? Because they're subjects of the crown, which means they're property and they're owned by the crown. That crown gets passed down, and then they receive everything that Queen Elizabeth has. The next heir is Prince Charles. But uh, just do a quick Google research on it. He's going to tell you everything Charles is getting ready to inherit. 
appreciate that, Chase. Appreciate that. And, you know, as always, I love having you up in the space. So thank you for um, definitely um, sharing your insight. Um, we got the art appeal. The art appeal. Go ahead and unmute your mic. Hey, hey, hey. I got to go. But I just want to say this, please. Um, I am just all about love, love for my people, working, being productive, getting things done. And love is respect to me. And respect is love. So um, I never would ever publicly or in private any yell about any of my people. I love all of you and all of my sisters, all of my brothers. I don't have to. It's so much work to be done. I don't have time to not have anything but love in my heart. So peace and blessings, everybody. Thank you right, for letting you me speak. Okay. We love you, you too, sister. Love you. Have a good one. So let me get back to Go ahead, Art of Peel. Go ahead and unmute your mic. Um, about the, the topic there. Queen Elizabeth's death. Uh, didn't we fight England to get this country? Like, I, I don't know. I, don't, I thought that, so I don't even know why that's a thing. And as far as reparations from UK, uh, yeah, they, they owe us reparations for more than one reason. So, but specifically for uh, same reason the United States owes us money. Maybe even more, considering depending on the homework. But I'll land with that. Yeah, great point. Like I like I mentioned that. I mean, you can make a case for Spain, France, the, the UK, and America owing Black Americans money like that too. And if we if we did enough research and stuff up there, I'm not sure in the, in the New York area if it was the Dutch or whoever also had slaves up there at one time too. So I mean, man, I mean it, it, it gets deep if we want to really, really, really want to get to that point like that. So definitely, like I say, the UK, good old England, they definitely owe some dollars and cents as well. So. Um, on that note, y'all, we're not gonna we're not gonna keep the space open too much longer. We've been going close to two hours, had a good space. So, DJ, um, is there anything you want to say before I go ahead and close it out for the night? Yeah. Um, speaking of TV shows again, uh, watch that Last Kingdom, man. Netflix. We we ultra it, but and get our little piece of the rock, man. Ship was stolen from us, our heritage, uh, you know, traditional values, whatever that may be, from Africa. And, you know, as well as over here for those that may be native, you know what I'm saying? And we are pretty much native anyway because you can't call yourself African-American. We've been removed from that continent for well over 500 years. So at the end of the day, we need to get money from everybody, yo. Everybody old black Americans, yo. We always taking our shit. Matter of fact, hope none of you got you. The BET Awards, you know, Fat Joe hosts them. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, everybody old, man. Real shit, yo. Let's get our bread, man. And like secret, uh, you know, uh, 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 uh sister thing said, ain't, ain't nobody got no time to be beating with nobody. We need to get our fucking check, man. And the nigga, niggas is fucked up. I'll, I'll leave it there. One love, yo. Rep raises up. All right. I want to thank everybody for coming to the Twitter space tonight. We'll be back uh, Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you guys make sure you uh, check out those notifications that we send when you see us. Tw- we did out a DM. Thank you all for supporting the Twitter Spaces. Had a great time this week. We may come back Saturday. I mean, I'm sorry. We may come back Sunday. We're probably going to come back Saturday. DJ, we're going to do a football space Saturday. So we're going to do an NFL and college football space. So we will be back Saturday for all our sports fans. But our regular spaces will probably resume back on Monday. So appreciate all you guys coming in. Y'all have a great weekend. And we will see you next week. Make sure you visit News Daily. Make sure you retweet, like, all of the tweets we send out, leave a comment if you can. Support us on Cash App, dollar sign news total. That is dollar sign news total. And until then, we'll see you guys. So have a great weekend and have a great night.